RH isoimmunization. Now, RH isomerization, which is more correctly called the RH LO immunization. What is LO immunization? If you have made an antibody which is going to act against human cells but not in the same body, like for RH antibodies which are made, LO immunization means that it is going to act, these antibodies will act against the red cells of humans, but not in the human in which these antibodies are made. That is what is aluminization. So, that is what we know that if the mother makes the antibodies, it is going to act against the, the red cells of the fetus. So, let us see about the RH antigen and its location a little bit more. We know that the RH antigen, the RH factor in fact, the RH factor has got representation on the chromosome 1. Now, this chromosome 1 has the, uh, you know, there is not just the D antigen which is part of the RH factor. In fact, there are two sets of locations. One is the RHD location and another one is the RHCE location. And we know that the RHD location will code for the D antigen, the also known as the RH antigen or known as the D antigen synonymously. And this is going to code for the C and the E. They are big C, small c, big E and a small e antigens. So, they are in total 5 antigens which constitute the RH factor. Now, the RH factor, the main antigen and the one which is responsible for majority of the problems of the RH aluminization is the D antigen which is associated with the RHD location of the chromosome 1. Now, if this D antigen is present on the RBCs of a human, we say that person is RH positive and if it is not present, we say the person is RH negative. You know, for example, let us see the mother's RBC. She has the A antigen and the father's RBC. Father has the A antigen, but the father also has the RH antigen or the D antigen. So, we say this father is A positive. What is that positive? Positive means the father has the RH antigen or the D antigen. Mother does not have the RH antigen, that is why she is A negative. And we know that when these two mate, there will be a fetus which could be positive for the RH antigen in almost 50% of cases if the father is heterozygote or 100% if the father is homozygous for the D antigen. Now, let me explain this to you in more detail. Suppose the father is positive, but he is a homozygote here and the mother is negative. She has none of these antigens. So, whatever combination of offspring forms, each one of these offspring will have the D antigen. Now, if the father is heterozygote positive and the mother is negative. Even in this condition, 50% of the babies, 50% of the offsprings will have the D antigen. So, yes, if the father is positive and he is a homozygote, the baby is always will be positive. If the father is positive as a heterozygote, even then 50% babies will be positive. Now, if the father is positive and if the mother is positive, can the baby be negative? Yes, that can happen if the father is heterozygote and the mother is also heterozygote. So, even in this condition, this combination you can see 25 percent will be negative. That means father is positive, mother is positive, both are heterozygote positives. That means 25 percent babies can be negative even in this condition. Now, tell me if the father is negative and the mother is negative. In that situation, can the baby be positive? Listen to me. Father positive, mother positive, but they are both heterozygotes. One of the babies, 25% out of four, will be negative. Yes? 
that can happen father is negative mother is negative and if the baby is positive please catch the neighbor that's a much bigger problem all right that cannot happen all right so yes when does this mixing happens so when does the mixing happens what do i mean by mixing when does the mother's blood gets mixed with the fetal blood that's what i meant actually i would like to say when does the maternal blood get contaminated by the fetal blood now wait a minute some of you might be thinking no mother's blood and the baby's blood is the same isn't it why are you talking about mixing uh, now i know a lot of us in fact all of us have been fed right from a childhood you know by our parents especially our mothers that you know i have given you my blood for 9 months and i have raised you in my tummy for 9 months you know that's the time when you should actually tell your parents that yes mom uh, you have given me lot of nourishment but i never took your blood there is never mixing of please mother's blood doesn't come to the fetus we know how does the baby get blood baby makes his own blood isn't it right from the time when the baby was a small fetal node we have read that when the baby was a small fetal node he had a yolk sac next to it so yes the yolk sac is the primitive hematopoietic system we know that and then the fetal node becomes a little bigger and starts making a primitive liver and spleen and that starts making the blood hematopoiesis starts taking place in the major organs and then in the bone marrow so the baby is always making his own blood baby makes his own blood all right there is no mixing of the blood there is no blood coming from the mother to the baby so even right from the time of the yolk sac the baby has got his own blood and then as the baby grows then the villi start forming the placentation from the mother side and villi from the fetal side and these villi are next to each other so that's why that's why nowadays smart children are telling their parents they're telling the mothers look mom you had your villi and i had my villi and these villi were lying next to each other in a organ called the placenta remember when i came out behind me one other organ came out yes mom that was a placenta so you sent your blood and i sent my villi and across this villi exchange was happening you know you were giving me oxygen rich blood and i was taking the oxygen from that blood but i was not taking your blood so i was taking the oxygen and the electrolytes and the carbohydrates and the proteins and the fat from you but i was never taking your blood your blood moved this way my blood moved this way and we exchanged the contents but we never mixed the blood so yes i have never taken your blood mom in fact your a and i am b suppose thank god our blood never mixed so yes we know this the mother gives nourishment to the baby without giving blood to the baby and there is no mixing so when does the mixing happen when this placenta separates from the placenta separates from the uterine bed we know if the uterus is like this and the delivery has just now happened the placenta is stuck to the uterine wall and whatever time it takes to separate from the uterine wall when this detachment happens this uterus now has lot of blood and this blood is coming from the placenta you know that placenta has maternal villi and fetal villi so this uterine cavity now has maternal blood and fetal blood and now the uterus contracts now when the uterus contracts there are villi there are blood vessels i'm sorry in this base of the placenta like this so now when the placenta separates when the placenta separates there is lot of blood in the uterine cavity now this blood could be maternal blood and fetal blood as a mixture and now when the uterus contracts when the uterus contracts this blood can find its way into the vessels in the veins of the uterine muscles and that's why i do not give methyl ergometrin remember we discussed pph contraindication of giving methyl ergometrin in Uh, in rh isomerization why because with methyl ergometrin the uterus suddenly contracts when the uterus suddenly contracts lot of the blood from the cavity will enter the uterine vessels you know when the uh, vessels contract there is a negative suction through the vessels so if it suddenly contracts it will be a lot of negative pressure it will be like 
like that. The vessels will suck in the blood from the uterine cavity and that will take a lot more blood from the fetus to the mother circulation. So, that is why we say do not give methyl ergometrin, do not give methyl ergometrin for PPH management in RH negative pregnancy. So, yes, I was talking about contamination and how does the contamination happen? It mostly happens at the time of delivery that when the uterus contracts, some blood will enter the mother's circulation. So, yes, what are the conditions where mixing happens? Mixing of the maternal blood with field blood most commonly at the time of delivery. How much blood? 5 to 30 ml blood from the fetus can enter the mother's circulation. It can also happen at the time of an abortion or a molar pregnancy. Even an ectopic pregnancy it can happen. It can happen in an abruption or if there is an injury to the abdomen and some transplacental bleed can happen. It can happen when the procedure is done like amniocentesis or chronic, chronic villus sampling. Now, that is why in all these interventions we say, if you are doing any intervention in a RH negative mother, we always give prophylactic anti-D, we always give prophylactic anti-D. So, these are the times when the mixing of the blood can happen and most commonly it happens at the time of delivery. So, what is the result of this contamination? Uh, I say contamination because the foreign antigen called the D antigen or the R ant antigen has gone to the mother's circulation. So, now the mother has got contaminated by the D antigen, mother starts making anti D antibodies or we simply call them anti Ds. These anti Ds will go and lyse all the fetal RBCs because they are carrying the D antigen. This anti D will go and have an antigen antibody reaction. Where does the antigen antibody reaction happen? On the fetal RBC. So, all the fetal RBCs will get lysed. Do not worry. It is the fetal RBCs in the mother's circulation which are getting lysed. The baby is already delivered. Baby is already in the nursery. Baby is not going to get affected. It is the blood of the baby in the mother's circulation which has triggered the mother's immunity. Mother's made antibodies to the T antigen and has destroyed the RBCs carrying the D antigen. So, mother has neutralized the threat for now, but what has happened? She has got sensitized. She has got sensitized. She never knew that there was something called a D antigen in this world. Now, when it came to her body, she has made antibodies against the D antigen. She is ready with the anti Ds or antibodies to the D antigen. Now, this time, the first time most babies will survive. But now, the mother has got sensitized. She knows that there is something in this world called the D antigen. Let it come to me next time, I will take care. So, what happens? Next time this woman is pregnant, let us say 3 years later, next time this woman is pregnant, now she is already sensitized, she has already got the anti-D antibodies in her, she is loaded with it, is not it? With those antibodies in her circulation, she conceives. And this time, unfortunately, again the baby was D antigen positive. Now, what is happening in this next pregnancy? Mother is loaded with the anti D, baby has got the D antigen. Now, all the anti D from the mother's circulation will go through the placenta and reach the baby. What does the baby have? D antigen. What is the mother sending? Anti D. D and anti D are going to have a war. Antigen antibody reaction will take place. Where? Where is the antigen antibody reaction taking place? In the fetal circulation. On which cell? the cell which is having the D antigen on the RBC. So, this antigen antibody reaction takes place on the fetal RBC now and because this antigen antibody reaction you know the host cell will always get lysed. So, yes, because of the antigen antibody reaction on fetal RBC, what are the problems of the fetus? There will be severe hemolysis and hemolysis will cause anemia and you know the breakdown of hemoglobin will give increased bilirubin. There will be jaundice and yes, if it is more than 20 milligrams per deciliter, we know that is known as carnitrous. So, kernicterus you know is that uh, there is fixing of the bilirubin to the basal ganglia and that can have uh, long lasting effects on the baby. So, yes, more than 20 
is going to cause chronic stress and because this anemia what is happening the red cells are getting lysed regularly in the baby and because this hemolysis the oncotic pressure of the intravascular uh, space the oncotic pressure is going to reduce and the fluids are going to move out and the fluids are going out of the intravascular space there are more third space collections third space collections in other words are ascites pleural effusion pericardial effusion and edema. So, all these effusions and edema, this tells us this baby is full of water. When this baby is full of water, we know we call that as hydrops fetalis. This is what is known as a hydrops fetalis. And yes, so much of uh, hemolysis can also be fatal. Yes, it can also be fatal. Hydrospitalis can be fatal. Uh, what happens because of so much of red cell destruction? When there is so much of red cell destruction, this fetus will compensate for the red cell loss by making lot of erythroblasts in the bone marrow. So, yes, there will be bone marrow hyperplasia and that is making a lot of erythrocyte series. So, that is why we also call it a erythroblastosis fetalis. And yes, hydrospitalis, erythroblastosis fetalis, we know it can be fatal also. Mm -hmm.